Hi, it's Dougie from Valto. In this video, we're going to look at creating an approval system within our Power App. Now, this is a follow on video from a series we've been creating, which is looking about replacing paper based processes with Canvas Power Apps. So please feel free to look at all the other videos to see how we got to this stage. But now, we're, what we've set up is a Canvas Power App, which is getting its data and storing its data from within inside of a SharePoint list. What we now want to do is build a approval system for this basic Canvas Power App. So the first thing we're going to do, I'm just going to navigate back to my SharePoint list and I'm going to create a um, column in here field, which is going to host the status of my item. So I'm going to have different statuses depending on my approval. So to keep it easy, I'm just going to have a new item, a approved item and a rejected item. So when I click on add column, I'm going to choose my choice field and this is going to be my statuses. So this is where I'm then going to enter um, new for anything that's newly submitted, anything which has been approved and anything that has been rejected. Now I'm going to set my default value to new and that just means anytime a new item has been created, it will automatically set the status to being new. When I click on save, that's going to create my column. What I'd then suggest is you actually update some of your items with some statuses, your test data, just so it's obvious inside of your app. So to quickly do that, we click on quick edit across the top, which puts our SharePoint list into like a spreadsheet mode. And then I can set maybe this one to new, this one to approved, this one to rejected. And we'll just put this one to approved as well. Then we click on exit quick edit. And that will then save the choices that we've selected. Now we've got our status field, we'll need to go back into our Power App and update our data source so it pulls through that latest field. So to do that, we can simply click on View, click on Data Sources, under here we can see the data coming from Instant Data, click on the three dots and click on Refresh, and that's going to then update and pull through uh, the latest data, including the latest fields. Now our data is refreshed, we can now um, add that data into our app. So. I want to make it nice and obvious what the status is of each one of these items. So to do that, next to the title, I want to put in brackets what this status is. So I'm going to select the, the, this title and you can see the text of this item dot title. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add um, a uh, space between this. Um, and then I'm going to add um, the status. So again, we can just simply type in across the top this item dot status. Now, because it is a choice field, we'll also need to put in a full stop and then value, so which is the value that's been selected. Now you can see I've got my title with a space uh, and the status. Now I think what might look quite nice is if we actually wrap this uh, in um, sort of like some brackets, so we can just put something like this. And at the end, remembering, we just need to, again, add uh, it like that. So that way we can easily see the, the title um, as well as the status of the item as well. So we might just need to make that title field a little longer just to make sure that it's uh, pulling those through. Oops, just looks like I've just lost the uh, end. There we go. So now we will be able to visually see when the uh, status has been changed. And if I add a new item, and I'll just call this, say, uh, fall downstairs, it's a quick item, uh, you'll then see the default status will set itself to being new which is based on the field that was in SharePoint where we set that default uh, of the status column to being new. The next step is to actually add our approval flow or Power Automate to this. Now I'm going to add this um, at the very last stage of creating an item um, and I want to trigger this once my item has been submitted. So to do that, when we select on this tick box across the top, this, this button, you can see by default, the only action it's got, so on the on select property, is to submit the form. Now I'm gonna add additional to this is I want to trigger a Power Automate directly from here based on this button. So to do that, all I'm going to do uh, is click on this Power Automate button across the top. Um, and then we'll see this pop out that will appear on the right hand side to show me previous Power Automates that I've uh, I've used uh, inside of Power Apps. 
Um, but I'm going to create a new one. So I'm going to click on this create a new flow button. Now what this is going to do is it's actually going to bounce me through to the templates area of Power Automate. Now these templates are really useful because you can find certain flows which have been pre-built for you um, and you can subtly customize them and tweak them a little bit just to make them work how you would like them to work. So I definitely advise taking a good look through all the different templates which are available within here. So I think the best one which is going to fit the requirements that we want at the moment is to send an approval email and uh, sorry send an approval email and follow up uh, via email and I'm going to subtly change this a little bit as well. So once we select that template, it's going to start trying to set up all the connectors and making sure I've got everything in place for me to start creating my flow. So I click on the create flow button and then that's going to create the flow from the template um, and, uh, and bring me straight to the properties page. So I can click on edit and I can see what this flow contains. So a flow will always start with a um, trigger of some description. In this case, it's going to be a power apps button, um, but in many cases it could be anything else. So it could be when an item is created in SharePoint, when a document's uploaded, when you receive an email, the triggers could be whatever you like. This is going to be a very simple kind of flow. So all I'm going to do is start an approval um, and this approval item uh, is going to then send this to whoever I signed to. And now you can see in here, it's actually asking me um, to provide a value back inside of Power Apps. So when I load this back in Power Apps, it's going to say it wants me to pass through who the approver is going to be. I could just remove this box and I'm going to type in somebody's name um, in directly into here so it hard codes it, but I'm going to show you how we pass through uh, those values into the assigned to. Then we've got the condition. So the condition underneath it is then saying based on the approval, so I'll just expand that out, the response from the approval, if it's equal to approve, then send an email informing that it's approved, or if not, then say it's going to be uh, rejected. Now I'm going to update this as well, that I also want to update my SharePoint item um, to say that, uh, that it's been either approved or rejected. So to do that, um, first I need to add an action and I'm going to add a SharePoint action. So I'm typing SharePoint and I can select SharePoint from here and I'm going to say uh, update item. Update item. Then it's going to say, well, what's uh, SharePoint site address, what list and what ID of the item do I want to update? So from a drop down, I'm going to select my SharePoint site. The list that I created was incident data. And the ID is something that I'm now going to have to get from my Power App. So I can click on this Asking Power Apps button, and then it, I'm going to pass through from my Power App the item ID. All I'm going to change in here, so the title is actually sort of defaulted. So um, I'm just going to set the, again, uh, I'm going to ask in, um, in here. Now, by default, we probably would have wanted to remove this kind of title, but I'm just going to pass through uh, the title from the Power Apps as well. So I'm just going to say uh, to ask for that inside of Power Apps. And I'm going to change the status value to being approved in this case. Now, I also want an option for my rejection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on these three dots here and click on copy to clipboard. So I'm going to copy this particular action and I'm going to add this action onto the other side. So if I go back onto my clipboard and add the item, I've now got an option for if it's approved, an option if it's rejected. The only difference I want to do here is change this option to being rejected and that way this is the option that's going to run if it's um, approved, and this is the option that's going to run if it's rejected. I now need to give my Power App a name, so I'm just going to um, call this my incident approval, um, and then I click on save. So now all we need to do is click into the top to add our incident approval. Um, so what I would recommend is just take a little copy of this as well, because I think it's going to override this sometimes. Um, so if you click on instant approval now, it'll add that flow across the top. But yeah, we just need to paste back in the submit for approval just to make sure that that does take place. And then we put the semicolon in between that just to make sure it runs the submit form, then it runs our flow. Now, once we've selected in here, you'll be able to see what it is that it wants us to provide. Uh, if you remember inside of the, the Power Automate flow, um, it was asking us to provide who the approver um, for, the, uh, for, for this system is going to be. Now, we could pass in a value from the form. We could do something like that. But I'm just going to hard code my own email address into this 
um, and then when I put a comma, it's going to say the result, the follow up to email. So again, I could pass a, who the result of this to and which email I'm going to send it to. But I'm just going to choose that I'm going to, again going to send this to myself. But this could be to a particular operational manager, or we could work out different values from the forms depending on what department was selected or something like that. Then you can say the update the, uh, of the item ID. So if you remember, uh, we need to select which SharePoint item it is. So to get that, the easiest way actually is we've already selected it from our uh, from our first screen. So from the browse gallery one here, we've already selected that. So if we type in browse gallery one dot selected we've got the shape item so we just need the id now so we can select the id and then we've got that we also needed the um the same again but the uh, title as well so we need the browse gallery dot selected dot title and now when we close this off that'll be everything we need now to run our approval so um, if I come out of here, click on File, Save and Publish, just to make sure we've got everything up to date. We can now play our um, app and I'll just go back to the home screen just to start again. We can click the plus to add a new item. We can say we want to create a new item, which is say, for example, fire in the office. Uh, we can fill out all the details, but I'm not going to just to save a bit of time. Um, then we can click on save. Now that then will create a new item for us. If I just refresh this data. Um, so we've got fire in the office here now, which is showing us the new status because it's the default that's come from the shape item. But what's going to happen is I'm now going to receive an email, which is going to have the approval inside of it. So just opening up that email, which has just come through, this is what this will look like. So I can then choose to either approve or reject um, this but I'm going to choose to approve it. We can provide comments and again you can pass that back through in your flow to do update an item with those comments if you wanted to but I'm just going to approve it at this point in time. Now when I go back into my app I can click on this refresh data button and I'll see that that item has now been marked as approved and I will have received the email. Um, the data will have been updated inside of SharePoint um, and that is really our approval system um, a very basic one set up and again we can expand out that flow um, to have a different levels of approval we can have multiple steps of approval there's other things we could do inside of SharePoint um, to, to, to flag things um, but in general that is how our approval system would then work please feel free to look at all the other videos in this series of how we're going to customize this at power app even further I hope you enjoyed that video if you need help, we do offer professional services, including bespoke development, pre-built solutions, training packages, and a pay-as-you-go support service, which bridges those knowledge gaps within your existing team. All of our employees are based in the UK and have years of experience deploying solutions with small businesses, as well as large enterprise organizations. We offer a free consultation with a no obligation quotation. If this all sounds good, drop us an email Ask for Dougie and I look forward to hearing from you soon.